Hello. It's 11.13 a.m. on March 23rd, 2021. I'm going to resume my reading of Other People's Money and How the Bankers Use It by Louis D. Brandeis. And then I'm going to provide the supplemental reading, or rather the other reading that is being uh, performed now in accordance with a sort of contrast that will be from uh, Benjamin Franklin's A Modest Inquiry into the Nature and Necessity of the Paper Currency. That will be the next video, but for this one, beginning on page 136, two-thirds of the way down, Railroads. We have come to associate the great bankers with railroads, but their part was not conspicuous in the early history of the Eastern Railroads. And in the Middle West, the experience was, to some extent, similar. The Boston and Maine Railroad owns and leases 2,215 miles of line, but it is a composite of about 166 separate railroad companies. The New Haven Railroad owns and leases 1,996 miles of line, but it is a composite of 112 separate railroad companies. The necessary capital to build these little roads was gathered together, partly through state, county, or municipal aid, partly from businessmen or landholders who sought to advance their special interest, partly from investors, and partly from well-to-do, public-spirited men who wished to promote the welfare of their particular communities. About, 25, about 75 years after the first of these railroads was built, J.P. Morgan and company became fiscal agent for all of them by creating the New Haven, Boston, and Maine monopoly. This ends about 60% of the way down on page 137.